Hi, all participants of the Web Conference 2021. I am Patra Tairat, a first year PhD student at KAIST and the presenter of this talk. Today, we would like to present the paper entitled The FTAR, a Deficient Network for City Wide Traffic Accident Prediction with Interest Driving Behavior. Let's start with the introduction. Uh, globally significant increase in traffic accidents caused by fast urbanization have become a crucial socioeconomic issue for humanity. So far, traffic accidents annually kill at least 1 million people and injure about 50 million people worldwide, more of whom were adolescents. Owing to such enormous suffering caused by traffic accidents, determining the causes of accidents is vital for designing a safer road environment and establishing an efficient policy. However, traffic accident recreation is still a challenging task because accidents are caused by various factors as you can see here. And therefore, recent studies have attempted to combine these various factors using complex models to pre make a prediction more precisely. Moreover, we can categorize the previous studies on traffic accident rate prediction by these three aspects. In our work, we categorize our study into these categories based on the datasets we have. And concerning the training datasets, most of previous studies used only the environmental features, meaning that they mainly rely on external factors. Here, we would like to newly introduce another intrinsic factor. Um, so what is the factor? Uh, we found that the other intrinsic and crucial factor is the dangerous driving statistics, which has not yet been utilized. As reported by Korea Road Traffic Authority and Traffic Accident Analysis System, Dangerous driving is one of the most significant factors that cause traffic accidents. Besides, driving behavior data can be easily collected using varied in-vehicle sensors. Thus, this driving behavior data is readily available and valuable for the prediction task. Accordingly, we aim to explore the idea of using dangerous driving statistics in traffic accident rate prediction. More specifically, these two research questions are formulated. To, research question, to answer research question one, we examine the usefulness of dangerous driving statistics to correlation analysis. And for this equation two, we propose a deficient network called the EFTAR to effectively incorporate dangerous driving statistics with other features. Before going further, let me briefly explain some related background. First, about a digi digital tachograph. A digital tachograph or DTG is a record keeping device for driving log data from moving vehicles the DTG device stores timestamped driving logs with several features as shown in the table, two monthly datasets in September 2016 and September 2018 of five big metropolitan cities were provided by the Korea Transportation Safety Authority. In the given datasets, 10 commercial vehicle types are included. Then about the dangerous driving behavior criteria, there are various criteria or rules for classifying dangerous driving in each country. Any criteria can be employed as a our methodology. In this work, we used the criteria divided by the Korea Transportation Safety Authority, which are widely adopted in South Korea. There are nine types of dangerous driving offenses. Each rule is specified by imposing a threshold condition on a variable such as speed, acceleration, and direction. Some of them are shown in the table. So how we compute the traffic accident risk scores? Uh, the traffic accident rate indicates the number of injured people in traffic accidents and their severity in a district at a particular time interval. Here in the equation, D is a district in a city and delta T is the time interval of the risk scores. P S delta T D is number of injured people of severity level S during time interval delta T in district D. Finally, the traffic accident rate prediction problem is formulated as follow. Given historical traffic accident rates, environmental features, and dangerous driving cases, we want to predict the traffic accident risks of each district for the future time interval by minimizing the prediction errors. The detailed and formal problem statement is also presented in the paper. Next, uh, the methodology part, we begin the study with correlation analysis. To answer this question one, we measure the correlation between the number of dangerous driving cases and the number of actual accidents. In this presentation, we would like to present only the key findings due to the time limits. Please refer to the paper for more detailed information on correlation analysis. Before giving further findings, it is worth noting the counterintuitive results of the overspeeding behavior. 
the overspeeding behavior not only shows the inconsistent values in both geographical and temporal aspect with high standard deviation, but the computed scores are not statistically significant. Uh, regardless of their values, the possible reasons could be overspeeding mostly occurred at really late night, that the number of vehicles on the road is extremely small, and drivers of those vehicles may be high skilled drivers that are very confident to drive really fast. Uh, addi additionally, the historical record from Korea traffic accident analysis system also confirmed that the traffic accidents caused by overspeeding are the smallest portions, only about 0.1% among other violations. As the key findings, we group the result into two categories. Regarding the geographical aspect uh, in sub level, the overall number of dangerous driving cases strongly correlated strongly correlates to the traffic accident. And regarding the temporal aspects in an hour interval, the analysis results show that in general, there is also a strong correlation. Specifically, the top three dangerous driving cases that have a strong correlation to past accidents of each aspect are shown here. And uh, in conclusion, as the answer for this question one, we ascertain that dangerous driving offenses are strongly correlated with the frequency of traffic accidents. Then about the DFTAR model. This figure depicts the DFTAR model's overview architecture, showing how it fills the learned representations of each block. We propose the DFTAR model, a diffusion network, aiming to predict the citywide traffic accident rate in each district. The architecture is motivated by a work called CLDNN. The difference is that we extend the architecture by separating the input into four groups for four feature sets to effectively incorporate dangerous driving behavior features while still working well with other environmental data. Moreover, we introduce a fusion block to the architecture as a gated activation unit and apply multiple load functions to enhance the learning process. First, the convolutional block. This block learns a hidden representation of its district static environmental features and consists of a set of stacked two-dimensional convolutional layers with Mac pooling layers. The last layer of this block, which is the linear layer, is used for dimensionality reduction. The static environmental features are the concatenation of broad features, point interest information, and demographic data. Overall, this block is formulated by stacking the highlighted equation here. Second, the recurrent block. The recurrent block learns the latent representations of the three time variant feature sets for each district. The first feature set is the concatenation of weather information, calendar data, and traffic volume. Hereafter, we call it as the dynamic environmental features. And next, the uh, risk scores and natural driving cases are the remaining feature sets. For each sub block, it consists of a transformer layer, a concatenated layer, and a GIU layer. We use transformer, la transformer layer to highlight a significant period in the temporal input features to the attention mechanism. And the concatenated layer combines the hidden representation of spatial features from the convolutional block and the time variant features so that the highlighted significant period can be learned jointly in the next layer. Then we use the GIU layer to capture the temporal patterns for specific geographical properties of aggregated representations. So basically, with the given input sets, each sub-block is formulated as the highlighted equations. Third, the fusion block. The idea behind this block is to fuse our related features while rescale and selectively preserve the essential learned representations. We use the concatenate layer to merge the hidden representations of all sub-blocks in the recurrent block for the gated activation. Here, the global context of all time features are jolly trained. The gated activation unit is decided for recalibrating the aggregated learned representations by a hyperbolic tangent function and a sigmoid function. Overall, given the concatenated hidden representation, the fusion block is formulated by the highlighted equation on at showing the scheme. Lastly, the fully connected block with two loss functions to map the learned representations to a more separable feature space. We use fully connected layers for estimating feature risk scores of each district. Overall, this block is formulated by the highlighted equations, except the last layer. For each fully connected layer, the LELU activation function is used for nonlinearities. Additionally, after the observation during training, we find that the predicted results were affected by the load function due to scarcity and rarity of traffic accidents. Consequently, 
We decided to use both lot functions for model optimization to make the model perform consistently in both metrics and get the practical predicted results in general. To validate the efficiency of the FTAR and the impact of dangerous driving behavior, we conduct extensive experiments on 10 real-world datasets from five cities, it's one month long. As stated earlier, we predicted to why future traffic accident rates using historical accident related data. Here, as in recent study, the past and future time intervals are 12 hours long. We categorize the data set into four groups as presented on the screen. Then we select 70% of data sets at the training set, of which 5% are used for validation, the remaining are used for testing. Uh, for comparison study, uh, three traditional and four state-of-the-art models are selected as baselines, and MAE and IMSE metrics are adopted for evaluating the prediction error. And here is the summary of hyperparameter settings used in the experiment. For the complete explanation of experimental settings, please refer to the paper. Regarding the experimental results, on average, we observe that Historical average is better than simple linear regression and extreme gradient boosting models, indicating that traffic extent in its district have a certain periodicity and seasonality that can be a good estimate for general long-term prediction. Deep learning models are better than other machine learning models since they can generalize the complex and heterogeneous input data better than the traditional approaches. Similarly, our proposed data model performs the best with the improvement of up to 54% in MAE and 18% in MSE from the baseline when training with all features, including the natural driving statistics, because it represents in which district the traffic accidents may occur. To quantify the impact of each feature group, we perform a feature regression study. The results presented in the table indicate uh, that even only with the natural driving behavior data can also improve the performance which become comparable to using all environmental features. As expected, combining all features can reduce the prediction errors by 32% in MAE and 5% in IMSE. Given these results, as the answer to research question two, we are confident that applying natural driving behavior can improve traffic accident rate prediction performance. Lastly, for case study results, these visualizations reveal that our proposed model can predict the traffic accident rate cost close to the real risk values, even though the event is sporadic. Taking sub-figure A as an example, it illustrates the result in the Gangnam district from 8 p.m. to 7 a.m. on the next day. As there is no significant change in the weather and air quality data, the weather may not be the key factor for the uh, accidents. Then about how about the traffic volume and dangerous driving cases? Here they show high traffic volume and natural driving cases in that time interval. Now, to be more specific, uh, the rapid acceleration offense, which is one of the highest correlation with traffic accident, according to our findings, occur most during that time. The results from that also exhibit similar patterns as you can see here. So in conclusion, this paper introduced a diffusion network for citywide traffic accident rate prediction, which we call is at the FTAR. Uh, before training the model, we quantify the correlation scores between natural driving behavior and past accident records to substantiate their relationship. Our finding revealed that natural driving behavior strongly correlates to traffic accidents in both geographical and temporal aspects. Therefore, we trained the proposed DFTAR model with extracted dangerous driving behavior and various environmental data. The evaluation results show that the proposed model outperforms the baselines with the improvement of up to 54% in MAE and 18% in IMSE. For future work, we, with an appropriate data acquisition mechanism, interest driving behavior can be utilized with real-time traffic accident prediction systems to help individuals avoid potential risks associated with its vehicle on the road. Moreover, this approach may also be adopted with autonomous vehicle to alert each other on the loads collectively. Thank you very much.